We're getting close to the end of finishing our board. We've got what we think is a final design. The layout is complete. There are two last steps that we have to complete. One is to run the design rule checker, the DRC. And this is going to be a final test to see if there are any obvious gotchas that we've left out. Again, it's not going to test for errors in our design. It's just going to test for manufacturability. And then once that is settled, then we're going to adjust the silk screen and we're going to make sure we add the appropriate labels in order to make the board more useful for us. Easy to assemble, easy to bring up, easy to use, and also with an ID on it so we can track it. Let's get started. Here's where we left our board. We've completed all the routing. I've inspected it with my Mark 1 eyeball. I think I have everything correct. And now as a final check, before we do a critical design review with at least one other team to look at the design before we commit money to it, we're going to do an internal test. We're going to check to make sure that the features in this board meet manu design for manufacturing based on what we set up originally. We're going to perform a design rule check. The DRC isn't going to tell us anything about the functionality. It's not going to tell us whether we're going to have too much noise or acceptable noise. All it's going to check is, do the feature sizes and structures that we created, do they match the design for, manufacture, design for manufacturability requirements? Let's run the DRC. So we go under Tools, DRC, Design Rule Check. And here are all the rules that it's going to check for. You can browse those at your leisure. And now we're going to keep our fingers crossed. We're going to run DRC Check. And it's done. And here's the report. Wow, it's wonderful. We didn't get any, no failures, no errors. We didn't even get any warnings. That's great. But as we scroll down, uh-oh, we got some other violations here, rule violations. And here's what they're referring to. Let's see, most of them are silk to solder mask clearance because the requirement is at least 10 mil gap between them and silk to silk clearance, at least a 10 mil gap. We have two of these. Let's look at these two. So we click it. It opens up the two violations and look at the violation. There's a slightly smaller gap than 10 mils, 9.55, 9.55, slightly under 10 mils uh, between these features. Now let's take a look. We're going to click on that error, that violation, and it will bring up for us automatically. Here we go. Uh, and here is that feature that violates that requirement. We set it up and said we want 10 mils clearance between any of the silk screen printing. It turns out Fab Shops can actually do a 6 mil clearance. We added 10 mils to make it a little bit more robust. We're slightly under that. That's still perfectly fine. I'm willing to live with that. Let's take a look at um, one of the other problems. And again, the same thing here, 9.55. These are silk to solder mass clearances. And if you notice, they're all within a tiny fraction. Look, that's a fraction of a mil. So it's... It's a great checker, but all of these are well within that, that um, six mil limit. These few here are a little bit closer than that. Let's take a look at that. This is a silk to solder mass clearance. It brings up the focus, and here is that structure. Now, it's a little hard to see. Where's the solder mask? I see the uh, silk screen here. Where's the solder mask? A little hard to tell here. Uh, and so let's... let's um, uh, let's see if we can't uh, just turn on the, um, the, the top solder. There we go. There's the top solder. And if, if we go back, um, here's the, the metal. And you can see the solder is going to be a little bit wider than that. It's this spacing here that's a little bit too short and, or a little too bit too, too narrow. And again, um, perfectly fine. The solder mask is going to go down. The silk screen will be placed on top of that. Not a problem. And so all of these errors that came up, the violations of the rules, I'm willing to live with because I know um, the requirement is, you know, ten, is really six mils. All of these are greater than six mils, not a problem. And so it looks like it looks like the D DRC has passed. I'm willing to accept uh, rule violations. The last step then is we want to um, add the silk screen labels to our board and make sure that it is readable. What we're going to do with silk screen has nothing at all to do with the functionality of the board. It's all about risk reduction. We want to make it easier to do the uh, test, easier to do the, um, we want it to be easier to use the board. All of these 
whenever you say easy, it's not for convenience, it's for risk reduction. The easier it is, the less chance of making a mistake. Remember, at the very beginning, in our schematic, we added to our design three features to make it easier, that is, lower risk in bring up and test and usability. We added uh, LED indicators, we added switches, we added test points. Now comes the time where we want to make it more efficient for us to use these. Instead of having just a designator over here or labeling this as a test point, I want to make it really easy when I look at this board to use it. So here we want to think about the user experience, whether it's you or somebody else. What can we do in adding labels to the board to make it easier for us to immediately identify what's what? Well, I don't have to worry about the connector. I know obviously where I'm going to plug it in, but I might want to label the test point. And so we're going to add some additional uh, text in order to label what this is testing. The TP1 is a useful designator. These are all reference designators that tell us what's the part that's going down there. We could, for example, all these LEDs are going to be the same. These resistors are different. We could, for example, add a little indicator for what the value of the resistors are. We could label the test point here. We could label what this switch is doing. Um, and we could label the LED indicator over here. So let's add a couple of labels. And after we label all the parts that are important, then we want to make sure we add some ID to the board so we can track it. That is, we can connect the layout file for this board with the layout file that we have created and the useful things like our name and date and, and rev. Let's add some of that initially. The way we're going to do that, we're going to, and, and we're going to add it in the top overlay. So we're going to grab a, 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 a string text. And you notice, uh, let's see, we're, what, oh, we're, we're going to put that in the top solder mask. No, I don't want to put it in the top solder mask. We're going to escape out. I want to bring to focus the um, overlay. And now what's a good grid size to use? Well, now let's, uh, we're on 10 mil right now. Uh, let's make it a little easier for us. Let's use a 50 mil grid um, in which to place the text. We've highlighted, we have focused the top overlay. That's the silk screen. Let's grab uh, some letters and let's add, um, and let's add the board ID. So here is where, so we, it's an object we just placed. We double click it and it brings up the parameters window for that object. And now we can add uh, the text information. Let's see, what do we want to call this? This is going to be the ECEN 5730. This is going to be the timer board. I'm going to put um, my name under it. And so I'm going to add another line of text. And this is going to be my name. And I'm going to put the date next to it. That's kind of like the rev code. And then finally, one of the most important things that we put here is the name of this specific board. And that's what we're going to tie to the file name that we save this with. And so the file name that I'm going to use is also ECEN5730. And of all the different boards, this is going to be board 1A. And I'm going to add a date code. This is the name of the board. This is also the name of the file that I'm going to save the board as. And so before I go any further, I've got my board. It's almost complete. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to save this layout file. So we go to a Save As, and I'm going to use exactly that same name. So this is ECEN5730 BRD1A, and this is the date code. I'm going to say save. And look, that's the file name. And now I have linked this specific board that we're going to fab with this specific file. If at some future time we want to do some automated assembly, some computer-aided manufacturing, and we need the layout file for this specific board, I know exactly which it is. And of course, we can add some affiliation here if we want to. And we'll put here a CU. Boulder. And what the heck? C, C, E, E. There we go. It's up to you what you want to put here, but at least you want to have the board ID on the board. Now comes the 
other features on the board, the labels, uh, in order to identify what's what. Now, here comes the important issue about the size of the printing. Let's double click on one of these, and we can look and see what the size of the text is. So this is the default setting here is 60 mils, and the stroke width is 10 mils. This means the width of the pen uh, that we're going to be writing with. A good ratio is um, uh, 6 to 1 or even 10 to 1. This is a 6 to 1 ratio of the width of the pen to the size of the text. You don't want to go under 6 mils. Um, the most fab shops can do down to 6 mil line width. 6 mil is a little hard to see. Uh, and you want to have at least 6 to 1. And so if you have a narrower line, that means a smaller height. Even 60 mils high is a little bit tough to see, but given the small size of our board, um, 60 mils will take. I don't want to go any lower than 60 mils um, in order to uh, put the, the large labels on there. However, for some of these other regions, I'll go down to below 60 mils, but I'm going to use a, um, a smaller pen width for it. So let's add some of the test points. This test point here is going to be, what are we going to measure at this test point? It's going to be 5 volts. Now we've already labeled in the silk screen which pin is ground. That's great. And so where do we want to put the 5 volts? Again, it's what is going to make it most robust, reduce the risk. I think if we put 5 volts over here, that's going to help. And we've got our switch over here. The SW1 is the reference ID. That's important for placing the part. But we also want to label this. What is it doing here? This is the off-on switch for the 555. So this is going to be labeled as off on 555. This is going to be labeled as this is going to be labeled as 555 off on. And it's going to be pretty obvious what's off and what's on because after all, it's a two pin header. If the pins are shorting if the flag is shorting the two pins, then it's clearly connected and it's on. If the pins are not connected, if they're at right angles, then it's clearly off. So I don't think there's too much ambiguity about that. Let's see, here's another switch. What's this? This is the signal to the LEDs. So we'll add a label for this switch. And this is LED off on. Let's see, oh, we got another test point. What is this a test point? This is the 555 output. Let's add a test point to it. This is 555. And what we might, oh, we have another test point. Let's label this. What's this a test point of? This is the current in the um, 1K resistor. One K resistor. And so this is one of those cases where, you know, if I were to um, rotate this, I might be able to fit it in there. So what do I do? Space bar and add it in place. Now again, this is a little bit on the large size. I'm going to make it a little smaller. So I double click to bring up its properties. Instead of 60 mils, eh, let's make it 40 mils. So now it's going to be a little bit smaller. Still readable, just a little bit smaller. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh, I have an LED indicator over here. And what is this going to indicate? This is 5 volt power. So again, let's use our... And so remember that trick that we used in order to uh, change the line width for the tool over here and change the via? We can do the same thing with the text. So we highlight it. Our cursor is the text engine. We push tab to pause everything. It brings up the, um, the properties page for our text writer. We come over here to the properties. Now we're going to make all of these 40 mils. And the stroke will keep at 10 mils. And so now when we put a label down, this is going to be the label that is going to be uh, in the smaller, smaller print. And so this is going to be um, 5 volt on. Let's see, where else? Um, do we have any other indicators? Well, all these are indicators. Uh, maybe it would help to label each of these resistors. So let's grab another one. This is going to be 10K. Got our text engine here. 
Is there anything else that we can think of that might help us debug this board? We've got the switches. We've got the LEDs. We've got the resistors. We've got the test points. Looks like we're in good shape. And the last step that we need to do is now save this board. So we come over here, we do a save, and we do one final save with the project. Now the project is saved, everything is saved, our board is done, and now our last step is, before we send it out to Fab, we want to get another pair of eyeballs on this and do a critical design review. And after the critical design review, we're ready to export the circuit board files and go out for fab.